The second class of hydrolyzable lipids we're going to talk about are triacylglycerols, or often referred to as triglycerides. Uh, you may have heard of triglycerides, like if you've had lab work done, it's something that they can measure in your blood, the level of triglycerides. Um, so triacylglycerols or triglycerides are triesters. So in other words, there are going to be three separate ester linkages here formed from this molecule called glycerol and then three fatty acids. So if you look at the block diagram below, you can see that there's three fatty acids linked to a glycerol. And each of these um, spots here where I'm drawing the arrows, these are all going to be ester linkages. All right, and then the next slide kind of shows it in a little bit more chemical detail. So here is glycerol. So you don't need to memorize the structure of glycerol, but it can be very helpful to know moving forward. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It's three carbons. It's like a three carbon, and each of the carbons has an OH on it. Right, so three carbons, and it's all OHs. So the reason that can be helpful is you can think of this as 3X alcohol. So in other words, glycerol is kind of like three alcohols where you have each of the individual OHs acting as an own alcohol group. And that can be helpful because like we talked about with waxes um, or whenever we talked about with esters in general, whenever you have an alcohol plus a fatty acid or a carboxylic acid, you make an ester. And that's exactly what's happening here in this slide. So let me take away this box here and kind of redraw it. What's going to happen is you have an alcohol there and a carboxylic acid there. You're going to lose H2O, so you're going to lose um, kind of the part that I've, let me do it in black here. So you're going to lose that, that's an H2O, and you're going to be left with CH2O, that's from this O there, and then your C double bond O, and then your R. And you're going to do that three different times. So again, on the next one, you're going to take your alcohol, and it's going to react with the carboxylic acid part. We take, we're going to lose an H2O, H2O, they link together, you form an ester. You get the same idea down here. We lose an H2O and they form an ester. So the overall product here of this triacylglycerol is going to have three separate ester groups linked together to that glycerol molecule, all undergoing that same reaction where we have an alcohol plus a carboxylic acid forming an ester. Um, so triacylglycerols can be formed from uh, three different fatty acids, three identical fatty acids, or any combination. So those fatty acids that we looked at that make that ester bond, the identity of them doesn't really matter. They can be saturated or unsaturated. Um, none of that part matters in terms of them being able to form that triacylglycerol molecule. Um, in this bottom part here, it mentions animal fats and vegetable oils. Um, these are the most abundant types of lipids, and they have very different properties, as you would imagine. Animal fats, if you think of like the fat you would see on a steak or something like that, versus a vegetable oil like canola oil or peanut oil or olive oil or something like that, they look very different, right? They have different physical properties. Some of them are liquid at room temperature, the vegetable oils, and fats are usually solid at room temperature. So... Um, fats are going to have a higher melting point, right? It takes more heat to melt them. Um, usually you have to cook them to melt them if you're talking about animal fats. Whereas oils have lower melting points, they're going to be liquids at room temperature. And the difference in their properties have everything to do with the number of double bonds. Um, fats, it says here, has few double bonds. Um, in terms of what I want you to know, think of fats as being saturated. In other words, the hydrocarbon group is saturated. In other words, no double bonds. There are times when you can have um, animal fats that have maybe one double bond. Um, usually, though, they're saturated, and let's just kind of simplify things. and Let's think of fats as saturated fats, 
right? Saturated fats meaning no double bonds. Whereas oils are going to have a larger number, number of double bonds. And as far as I'm concerned, in terms of your thinking of this, oils are going to be anything with a double bond. All right, and whenever I say anything, obviously we're specifically talking about these triacylglycerols. So anytime there's a double bond in the hydrocarbon chain, right, that's going to classify it as an oil. Um, so here's a picture of it. Um, you can see this is going to be a saturated fat. Over here, if you look in the parts that have like the red on it that I'm circling, right, that's where you have that glycerol backbone. Right, where you have the ester linkages, right? So that's going to be the part where you have the glycerol and then you have those esters that are formed from the bond with those high molecular weight alcohols. And then the rest of this part that you can see here, I'll circle in green, right? Those are all the hydrocarbon attachments. And as it mentions in the slide, there's no double bonds in those long hydrocarbon chains. We would consider that a saturated fat, so a saturated triacylglycerol. And these are generally going to be animal fats. Now, oils are going to have much more double bonds, in other words, more than one. Um, and almost always, this double bond is going to be in the cis configuration. So think back to your stereochemistry, right? Cis is whenever it forms kind of that C-shaped, where it has both of the carbon groups on the same side of the double bond. And the important thing here, if you think back to that structure um, we looked at earlier with the oleic acid, the double bond uh, produces a kink in the side chain, and that kink in the side chain makes it more difficult to pack together, and it leads to a lower melting point in the structure. Um, and here's an example. You can see the cis double bond right there. Um, when you have that cis double bond occur, notice that, right, if you looked at this double bond, right, both carbon groups are pointing down, right? The two carbon groups, I'll circle them in red, right? What I mean is this carbon is down from the double bond, this one is down from the double bond, so that makes it a cis double bond. And that creates a kink in the chain where it doesn't just keep zigzagging like it did before. That makes it harder to pack together. Now, this would be an unsaturated fat. Um, you can see this one only has one double bond. Sometimes you'll also see double bonds in these other chains. Sometimes you won't. But again, in terms of what I want you to know, if you see any double bonds at all like this, um, think of that as an unsaturated fat, which is derived from a vegetable oil. All right, so fats are important. So fats are important to build our cell membranes, to insulate the body. We get a lot of energy from them, right? If you remember back, uh, whenever we talked about energy from molecules, we said fats give us um, nine calories per gram, whereas proteins and sugars give us four calories per gram. So fats of the biomolecules we talked about are the highest in energy. Um, you still don't want to have too many of them, and it says here that it's recommended that probably no more than 20 to say 35% of your daily calories should come from lipids. Um, you also want to make sure you limit the amount of saturated fats, saturated triacylglycerols, because a diet high in saturated fats is linked to heart disease. And that's primarily because um, the fats can help clog your arteries, not only themselves, but also because they stimulate cholesterol synthesis. Um, cholesterol synthesis can form plaques in your arteries. Whenever you have those plaques in your arteries, they kind of make it so the blood has more trouble flowing through. The result's going to be high blood pressure. If, they get, if your arteries get completely clogged, you can have a heart attack or a stroke. Um, and so not only do the saturated fats stimulate cholesterol, but it's also kind of a double whammy because a lot of foods that are high in saturated fats are also high in cholesterol itself. So the cholesterol that clogs your arteries is both kind of derived from your diet as well as from um, cholesterol that's made by your body, so you can get it in two different sources. Unsaturated fats, on the other hand, um, can help lower the risk of heart disease and decrease the amount of cholesterol in the blood. So unsaturated fats, are again, are the ones that have the double bonds, specifically those cis double bonds. Um, and 
kind of a lot of nutritionists will tell you specifically omega-3 fatty acids or some of them will say kind of there's a particular ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids that are useful in um, lowering the risk of heart attack and stroke and that uh, kind of basically heart disease in general. Um, one very important thing to keep in mind here is that whenever we're looking at these uh, double bonds that it's absolutely imperative that the double bond not be in the trans orientation. So trans is bad and if you have trans fats the beneficial effect is lost. So trans fats basically make the fat look like a saturated fat. In other words, a saturated fat being the one that doesn't have any double bonds at all. So trans fats, which are usually synthesized, they're not naturally occurring. So a lot of times, um, like when food companies process food, they do, uh, they do some chemistry on the food that makes them and converts them into trans fats. These can serve to increase uh, the cholesterol levels because they look just like saturated fats. This slide here shows exactly what a, a trans fat would look like. And if you didn't see this heading down here, you would probably think this looks exactly like that saturated fat we looked earlier when all three of the chains were um, all saturated fats. This one, though, has a double bond. So you would think, oh, it has a double bond. It's an unsaturated fat. Well, that's true, but because it's a trans double bond, it's a trans fat, and the reason the trans fat is not good for us, like the unsaturated fat, like a typical unsaturated fat that has a cis double bond, is because of this trans bond makes it look just like that saturated fat. Um, let's see if I can go back and show you the previous slide. So this is the one right that has a saturated fat. You can see all the zigzagging, and this one that we looked at here whoops, looks exactly the same. So again, that's what you should be kind of seeing here, that this trans fat looks just like the saturated fat, which is why it's not uh, necessarily good for you, like the unsaturated fats typically can be. Okay, in terms of metabolism, we mentioned before, right, nine calories per gram for fats. So we store these fats in um, adipose cells, which are fat cells, uh, below the surface of the skin. And it's interesting because the number of fat cells we have is constant. Um, even if you were to gain a lot of weight or lose a lot of weight, you don't gain or lose fat cells. You keep the same number of fat cells, but these adipose cells or fat cells are very um, stretchy. So you can put a lot of fat into these cells, and that's what happens when you gain or lose weight. When you gain weight, the cells swell up a lot. If you lose weight, they shrink. But they don't increase or decrease in number depending on your weight fluctuations. The only way you can really get rid of them is to suck them out, but then if you don't change your diet, you're going to keep eating the same, and the extra fat that you start eating is going to go into other fat cells. So really, if you want to lose weight, you got to change your diet and exercise more and all that good stuff. Um, the way we break down the fat from these fat cells for energy is to hydrolyze, right? That's why these are considered hydrolyzable lipids, is to hydrolyze the esters. So we're going to break down the esters again into the individual components. And then in this case, we would break the ester into a fatty acid and an alcohol. And as it has in this bottom point here, it says complete metabolism of a triacylglycerol yields CO2, H2O, and a whole lot of energy. And that's because we can take the fatty acids that we generate from breaking down a triacylglycerol and further metabolize those down um, to generate the, the energy and the CO2 and the H2O, which we're not going to go into the details of how to do that, but just know that that's what happens. But what I do want to make sure we know how to do is to look at um, a reaction for a hydrolysis of a triacylglycerol. So here's the hydrolysis of a triacylglycerol. Um, so what you can see is we have the triacylglycerol on the left with the glycerol component here, and then our fatty acid components over there. Um, and we have the three water molecules. So again, I'm going to write out the three mo water molecules as HOHs in all three times. And we're really going to be doing the same reaction three different times. And that is to say we're going to break the double um, 
the, the bond between the carbonyl carbon and this oxygen. So we're going to break that bond. We're going to break that bond. And we're going to break that bond there. And then we're going to take the OH, and that's going to come in here to form a fatty acid, right? A carboxylic acid, specifically a fatty acid because it's a large one. And then we're going to take the H, and it's going to come over here, and it's going to come over here, and it's going to come over here. So in this case, what we're going to form is glycerol, which is going to be CH2OH, and then CHOH, and another CH2OH. And then we're also going to form three separate fatty acids. So each fatty acid is going to be in the C double bonded to O bonded to an OH. And then it's going to be CH2 16 CH3. And we would make this one here three times, right? Because each of, uh, each of the fatty acids in this case would be the same. Now, if all of these weren't the same, so in other words, if this fatty acid was different than that one, you would actually form uh, separate products there. But in this case, they're all exactly the same, so we're going to have three of the exact same products being formed.